Hi, this is Debbie. Welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener. And we are doing a little bit of a harvest today. Um, kind of just finishing up the fall harvest. There's still quite a bit of stuff that's still left out in the garden right now. We still have rutabagas and still some Tahitian squash and still some cucumbers and some other things going on. Tomatillos, still some tomatoes. All of that is still going on. So we still have plenty of that, but we went ahead and got the main part of the harvest out of the way which was the acorn squash, the rest of the white um, pumpkins, uh, one of the Tahitian squash and um, white acorn squash and also the green acorn squash, as we mentioned, and some more of the zucchini. I had some more yellow straight neck squash. Those are still both producing. And I had a gray zucchini and still another pumpkin that I had went ahead and brought in. And my cute little cookie jar. I picked that up at the Goodwill just the other day for $3. And I absolutely love it. It matches my kitchen table set that I just put on. And you can see where I'm storing all the flat boxes and things for harvests. And all of my other baskets that I've picked up from the Goodwill and places. But anyway, that's what we've been doing. It's just harvesting up some vegetables. I've brought in some tomatoes, some tomatillos, and um, some more cucumbers as you can see there. They're kind of getting really weirdly shaped now. It's end of season So that's what happens when they get to at the end of the season They're still good. They're just a little oddly shaped and loads and loads and loads of acorn squash. I think I counted 25 at one point in here So I don't know if I've added a couple more since then some of them are pretty small But that's what happens when you get at the tail end of the harvest So I've got two or three that are pretty small, but the rest of them are all Normal sized acorn squash, some bigger than the others. Um, some of these are pretty huge, honestly. And I had a table queen or two um, acorn squash that's pretty pretty big, like this one right here. So the Tahitian squash, of course, is hard to compare to because that thing is about 25 pounds. It's just huge across the table. The table across is um, over 60 inches and it takes up more than half of the table so lots of good harvest going on and like i said we still have stuff going on in the garden let's go take a little bit of a tour i wanted to show this real quick we still have strawberries coming in this is just the strawberries off the north side and i'm getting ready to go pick the ones on the south side now which will probably have more but we're still getting strawberries in as well and here we are out in the garden. I have harvested quite a bit of stuff, so you're not going to see as much in here and started cleaning out the garden beds for winter. But we still have loads and loads of mustard, turnip, kale, and kohlrabi still going on. And I did bring some of the pots from the south side over to the, the um, front side of the house, which I think is on the west side. So I have that going on here. We're still harvesting some seeds off of the cilantro or coriander. And we still have some radishes in here that are getting ready. And as always, I had to pause the video because, well, we had a delivery come in. And it seems like that happens every time I pick up the camera these days. So that's why you haven't seen me as much is because I've been just so busy. Um, anyway, we still have carrots going on like crazy. Uh, we have some pretty good sized carrots in there as of now. I could pull them, but I actually want to leave them as late as I possibly can just so I can get a bigger size out of them. Right now they're usable and probably about six inches long, but I want them to be a, a lot thicker than that. So um, just waiting for them to get bigger. And I have ordered quite a few of new seeds to try out for the new season. One of those I believe is the Cucota. Um, cucumber or sorry um carrot his kokoda carrot so i want to try that i think it's a japanese variety of carrot um it's supposed to get way bigger and be much sweeter so i'm going to try that see how that works um i like all of the standard varieties of carrots but i like to try something new all the time and of course we still have beets coming on and they are heading up very nicely um got a, quite a few of some larger sized heads in there i've pulled a couple of them already which were very nice so still have some beets going on we still have a few lingering from the first run of beets but not very many i could pull those they have nice heads on them rutabaga still going on um, loads of nice big rutabaga in there you can see those purple heads in there 
Um, some of them are so large now that I could compare them to a pumpkin at this point, especially this one up here in the front. You can see that guy over there. Let me see if you can see a better visual of him. There he is. So quite large. I ended up with a white cucumber mixed into my this was the acorn squash, this is the white acorn squash, and then I had the cocazelle squash over here. And I ended up with a white cucumber somehow or the other that got mixed in. So I noticed that I do have a white cucumber on this. Right there. Getting a nice size on it. So I'm just going to let it go. It's got another one over in here. Kind of bent. Probably was pushed up against something. So anyway, just let it go and let it do its business. Um, I've suffered a damage to one of my cabbages and I don't think that it's anything related to pests. I think it has to do with either it got too dry or maybe it got too wet. But as you can see there, I've got a little bit of damage on it, but the cabbage right next to it looks absolutely fine and so does the one next to it over here. And then of course I have three other cabbages here and those look fine as well again the holes are not damages from pests those are from hailstorm that happened uh, not very long ago still have plenty of parsley coming on and that's the patch that I will leave I'm so glad that it bounced back as well as it did I still have some more Swiss chard that's happening I've just been pulling some of the leaves and it keeps coming back out so seems like it is pretty prolific Anyway, still getting some really nice sized cocosel squash off of these cocosel squash plants. And I still have some pretty nice spinach. There's only a few bunches in here left, but some really nice spinach. And it is not going to seed or anything, which is good. There are quite a lot of yellow jackets out here right now. This happens in Cheyenne, Wyoming. When it gets in the fall, there's just yellow jackets everywhere. So you can kind of see them just buzzing through in the picture. And they're all coming to look for water. So every once in a while I'll just fill up some water just to let the yellow jackets have some water. Even though I really don't like them, I wish they'd go away. They do help pollinate because they've kind of transitioned here in Wyoming to helping pollinate plants rather than being such a pain in the butt. Anyway, still have a broccoli head coming on. Quite nice sized already. And we still have cauliflower that is coming on. See that head down in there? That is something I'm so happy about because it's taken so long for these plants to produce anything. And as you can see, they're getting loads and loads of leaves on them again. It's about time to trim them again. Um, just an amazing amount of growth on these things. Because, you know, I have trimmed them like four or five times, taken all the bottom leaves off, and just basically left the upper leaves. And they had just keep, keep producing leaves. But they do have little cauliflower heads on them that are coming on. My lettuce, the romaine lettuce, has basically went to seed. It's still edible. It's just a little bit more... Um, I wouldn't even say bitter. It's, it, you can still eat it just fine. It's just a little bit tougher. Um, still have yellow straight neck squash coming on. Loads of it through there. Still have peppers coming on my plants. So I'm not getting rid of them until I absolutely have to. Still have zucchini. Lots of that going on. But I did take out, if you noticed, there were no more pumpkins. I did take out the pumpkin vine because it was no longer blooming, which means that it was done. So the only thing that's left over here in this section is a zucchini plant or two that's remaining. And it does have a zucchini on it, a couple of them actually that are going to be quite nice. So once it got that sun in there, it just kind of took off even more. And I've, I've had several zucchinis off of that plant. So really prolific, nice plant over here. For some reason, the pumpkins and zucchini and squash all seem to love this little tiny area over here a lot more than the rest. And as you can see, I do have kohlrabi. Nice heads on the kohlrabi that's happening. It took a long time, it seemed like. For the kohlrabi to come on but it finally is and i still have loads of flowers that are blooming still have violas 
And I still have pansies and marigolds and all of that still going and more violas. Um, some of them are dying back. This one's dying back a little bit. See, going to seed. You can actually see some of the little, the little seeds in there that have sprouted all over the place. So I'm expecting that I'm going to have to do a lot of weeding this uh, next season of violas and things that have spread everywhere because I just had so many this season. Anyway, you can see the garden is, you know, looking worse for wear as far as the end of season goes, but it's still producing. I just picked another gallon of green beans off of these green bean plants. And I went ahead and added some more soil at the base of the plants so I can get more out of them. Because we're not looking at having any type of freeze or frost anytime soon that it looks like. So I'm just gonna let them go as long as I can. They can keep producing if they want to. The peas look pretty bad. I'm probably gonna get in here and clean all of these out and I might actually attempt to plant some more since I don't see any bad weather coming anytime soon. And peas will handle a frost. And I have more tomatillos. They just come on like crazy. I picked some earlier today and they're just continuing to go. So I'll keep picking as long as they keep producing. And as you can see, I did clean out all the red curry squash. They were done for the season. So they are out of this section. All that's left now is some basil along the strip. And it's doing quite well. And now that it's um, had the shade taken out, it is really starting to explode. I cleaned out some of the cucumber plants, but not all of them, because some of them are still producing. So you can see it looks a lot more sparse in here, but still producing anyway. So let's walk through the garden now that we can get through it. As you can see, my soil is not bad at all. It has been amended a lot over the years, so it's quite nice soil. And you can see where I did hoe up uh, the soil up around the beans, just to see if I can get some more production out of them. I actually see a green bean that I can pick right now. A couple of them, in fact. Look at this. <laughs> I missed those yesterday, it seems. So I'm going to go ahead and pluck those and add them to the bag. So it's a full gallon of beans that I have. And as you can see, the vines still look pretty healthy. Got a little bit of yellowing. I've had a couple of the plants die off, but for the most part, they're still going pretty good. So I'm just going to let them go. Looks like that that part might die off. So it's a little wilted right here. That's okay because that's the upper part. So, and you can still see all of the beans hanging. These are beans that are not ready to pick. and still have loads and loads and loads of those in there. So I'm probably going to get another gallon out of these at least before snow flies. So, and here's another bean I missed yesterday. See there? Sometimes you miss some because I couldn't get to the back side yesterday because all the squash vines were still in here. So still looking pretty good and they're still blooming so they will have some more on them. And this is the back side of the cucumbers. Um, we still have cucumbers going on in there. You can kind of see them. They're a little misshapen again and I do have that one lemon cucumber still producing like crazy. You can see all over in there. Still have plenty of those on there. And I promise to let those go to seed because somebody's wanting to get the seed off of those. Still have super sauce tomatoes coming on, at least off of this one plant. I think the rest of them are kind of died back. This one's a little bit alive, just a little bit. Still producing some. And I've got a couple hanging on this one that are pretty large, you can see right there. And that is the one that produced the two largest ones. So I'm not surprised, this one did produce the largest ones. And again, it has the largest ones still remaining. And I still have some mixed lettuce is uh, coming on. I've already picked on this three times now and it's coming back again. And the ox heart tomatoes are still producing like crazy. I've eaten a couple of them already. They are delicious, but they just take such a long, long time to get ready. But I have loads and loads of these ox heart tomatoes in here. You can kind of <clears throat> see them just hanging everywhere. 
still doing pretty well. And I've still got little yellow pear tomatoes coming on. Just a few, but there's still a few remaining and you can see where I cleaned out all of those vines. I have to carry those off to the compost pile. And you can see my butterhead lettuce is making heads now. Has been for a couple of weeks and just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And now that it's not shaded anymore, it may struggle a little bit in the heat, but it'll be fine. I did take the gold potatoes out, harvested those. I got a little bit of a harvest off of them, not what I expected, um, but at least I got basically what the bag was worth in potatoes, which is good. And you can see that large Tahitian squash still hanging out over there. It's not ready. That was one of the younger ones that came on. So I've got three or four still remaining that are big like this. Um, and hopefully they'll get ready before snow flies. Um, with the weather the way it's looking, they probably will. Um, we're going to be eating one of those today. And I still got one in storage. Um, and the only reason I was eating one is because people are wanting the seeds. And I went ahead and got those seeds out of that one and put those to dry. And I still have a whole bunch of radishes that I have planted all through this section just to keep production going. And I probably will plant some more lettuce because lettuce does well even in a light frost. Still have borage. I did have to take up a couple of them because the watermelon vines were wrapped all around. And I'll show you what I got for watermelons. I'm not happy about it, but I kind of expected it. That's what happens with watermelon. And you can see another uh, Tahitian squash there. And that is the watermelon harvest. That was it. They're pretty small, not really worth anything. And I probably will not do watermelons again next season because it just takes too much effort and I'm not getting anything out of them. But I had plenty of cantaloupes, which was great. You can see another Tahitian squash in there and another great big one. This is probably going to be the biggest one that we've had right here. And it just began a few weeks ago. So that is still a very young Tahitian squash coming on. And we still have a few more that are setting, but I don't think they're going to have time. I would be surprised if they did. The vines are still doing wonderfully. No sign of disease or anything on them. No downy mildew, got a little bit of yellowing on a couple of leaves, but that's actually from damage from where I was taking them, the corn out and unfortunately breaking a couple of the leaves and things like that. So that's what happened there. But you can see this Tahitian squash is just massively long and huge. And we still have lots of blooms and it is still producing Tahitian squash. You can see right there, one of the youngest ones coming on. It's just a few days old. And it looks like that there was one on the end that got pollinated today. You can see the beginnings of the pollination happen. So all of that is going on here. And I still have a few of my containers left, but not anything huge, just mostly flowers and some herbs, basil, lavender, got one snacking pepper left in a container that's still producing like crazy it still has peppers all down in there you can probably see hanging still have a tomato this is a cherry tomato still have loads of tomatoes on it that are still coming on and here is the other strawberry plants that i'm going to have to go through and i did go ahead and plant some more radishes here in containers in spinach and one other thing that i cannot remember and wish now that i had labeled <laughs> but we'll find out when it comes up i left an eggplant where i pulled out a cucumber to see if it blooms or does anything and i may take it inside because my grandmother used to keep eggplant inside and they would produce and then i still have the tiny tim tomato with loads and loads this this little guy has produced like crazy little tomatoes and they have been wonderful so anyway, that is it for a late garden tour. What we got going on, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out. And we will see you in the next one.